got a question to ask you. What would happen to a guy in a tennis match if you stood there like this? Give up? Well, I'll tell you. Nothing would happen. He would probably get hit by the ball. He would lose the match. Uh, he might lose his teeth. He'd get booed. And, well, you get the idea. He needs to take action. Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. And that's what we'll be doing today, cartoons in action. And for our feature of the day, find the differences picture. Did you ever have, like, two pictures, see two pictures that are exactly the same, and in one of them there's, like, ten differences and you have to find them? Well, I'll show you how to do that today, and you can make your own activity book. And for our doodle trick portion, a favorite around here, alphabet tunes. Finish cartoons from letters in the alphabet. So if you're ready, all right, let's take action. Come on over here. And before I start, I'd like to play an old tune that goes back many years, and no, that's enough of that stuff, right? Okay, let's start with something called the Instacartooner, and this is a great method to create thousands and thousands of faces, and we'll create our first face with it. And I start with, I have a sheet of a bunch of fa uh, facial outlines, and I select one of them, and I'll take that guy right down there, and I'll tape it down, and I have some plastic overlay sheets that are used to mix and match and create thousands and thousands of faces. And one sheet has eyes, one has noses, and I have mouths on the other sheet. So I'm going to isolate one of the faces right here with this piece of paper so we don't get confused when we look at it with all the other faces. And I'll tape that down as well. Okay. Now, as I said, we have all these facial outlines and we have all these features. So I will select a pair of eyes and let's see. Take these eyes right here, these googly looking eyes going around in circles. And it's going to help us with our first sketch in action. And let's see, I'll select the nose right here. I want to do this little nose right there. How's that? And all the features fit on all the faces. And if you don't like the way it's facing, you just flip it over because it's plastic. And it'll work any way you want. And we got them screaming. How we use that one? That one there is gives them buck teeth. This one here gives them a silly smile with his tongue out. But we're going to use this one because we want them screaming. Now, what you can do now is trace that face with some uh, tracing paper, or you can just copy it. And that's what I've done. And I have it all prepared for you. And I'll tape it down for you, and we'll draw our first action pose. Here's that face that I've drawn. And I've drawn it a little bit larger. All right, we're ready. Now, the next thing we're going to do is lay out this cartoon with some shapes and some lines. So first I'll st start with a shape right about like that. And that will be his torso. And now for his legs, up like that. And his one foot. And his other leg is out like that. And here's his other foot. And all his arms, well they're straight out. And what's happening is this action is going to be of a boy who looks like he got scared to death and he jumped out of his seat. And here's his seat. And his arms are up. Now let's go back and let's put some detail into this. Now we're just sticking up what we've already laid down. So there's his sleeve, and here's his forearm, and his hand. Now for hands, circles, a square, whatever you want to start with, I'm going to use a square shape. And here's his thumb. And you put fingers on this shape, and that's how you draw cartoon hands. This one's not a real hard pose because it's straight out like that. And let's do the other one, same way. And this is going to be a great action pose because it shows real movement. You know, the old drawings in the, the Egyptians, there's how they were all squared off and looking sideways, very two-dimensional. No action. You have to have action. As a cartoonist, it's your job to report the action and to exaggerate it. Okay, here's his body. All right, now we're going to go over that line like this, double it, and put his pants on like this, and his shoes. Well, just going to really darken in that shape, and we'll make it like he's wearing sneakers. So we just go back like that and put the other leg in the same way. And a great way to get action poses is where else? Sporting events. Bring your sketch pad and sketch away. Okay, there he is. Now let's put some cartoon effects and accessories on this guy. Some shaking and some swirlies. How about some swirlies on his arms like this? Looks like his arms are like waving in the air. Maybe even a sound effect like yipes. Yikes! Coming from him. 
I like that. You know what? I'm going to put a little color into this guy. And I'll start with some light peach for his face. And for his hands and arms. And when you go to a sporting event, make sure you bring your sketch pad. Or you can watch television. There's a lot of sports on television and just try to get the action down. And get in the habit of seeing the line of motion. That's important. You don't want to necessarily finish the drawings. That's not necessarily what's the important thing. What is important is that you see that line of motion and get the action all in one shot. Let's put some blue in for his pants. And then you can go back later on and make a detailed drawing of it. Uh, a little bit of red for his tongue. And there it is. I like that sketch. Let's do another one now. And this time we'll draw a girl gymnast on the horse. And let's see, we'll start that one with an oval for her head, just like this. And for her body, it's going to be in an L shape. So I'm going to make a line like that and a line like that for her body. Now, what we have to do is go back and put her face in first. And let's have her looking at us with a big smile. And here's her ear. And let's put her hair in a ponytail. And she's happy. Now, we're just going to use this as a guideline. And we're going to put in her shoulder going along that line. And here's her arm coming straight down like this. And let's see, she's on the horse. Now, this is like the kind of horse that doesn't have the handles. And let's see, let's put her body in. That she's supporting the weight of her body. And here's her foot. Now, watch how I do her leg going straight out. Go straight down the top part. And when you get out here, I'm going to come back. Here's her toe, the ball of her foot, and the heel. Right? And then I'm going to go all the way like that for her calf. And then come here for the thigh. And then all we have to do is double that line. And we've got a great drawn leg. Now let's put the horse in so she doesn't look like she's floating in space here. And let's see what she'd have some perspiration coming out of her. And need some speed lines for this one because that's what's going to give it the action. And some lines like this, maybe even some swirlies on her feet, like they're moving around. And that's a great sketch. And it shows some movement, just with an L like that. We've got all that movement. Now let's do another sketch. And this time, I'd like to show you a neat effect. And this is an action pose, but it's a strange kind of pose. It's a, a superhero flying at you. And it's in perspective, and it's kind of cool. I'll show you what I mean. First, let's draw his face. And put some detail in his face real fast, because that's not really what I want to emphasize. There's his mouth, which is really kind of like a square with some pointy edges. And some cheekbones. And some ears. And let's give him some curly hair like that. All right. Now, here's his shoulder. And here's his forearm. And here's his fist. Here's his finger, his thumb, and here's his fingers coming up like this. And here's his knuckles. And here's his body. Let's put a cape on him. And here's his chest. Now, he's leaning forward, and that's the interesting part about this pose. And his body is all behind him. Now, for this arm, now watch this. This is interesting. We're going to put the shoulder in like we did before. And the forearm like that, only this time. We're going to make his other fist look how much bigger. But that's going to work. Watch. Here's his thumb. And we're going to draw it the same way. Here's his fingers. And here's his knuckle. Now, what does that show you? That shows you that I can't draw. No, that doesn't show you. It shows you that this one is further back. And this one is seen in perspective, which is closer to us. And when two objects are even the same size in reality, but seen in perspective, they appear to be different sizes. This one's coming at us in the foreground, so it's like that. Now, for his feet, which are way back, we're going to actually draw them. Now, here's his feet and his legs. Now, if you concentrate on that part, you'll say, like, oh, that looks weird. If you really look at it and keep looking at it and say, well, what is that little growth coming out of his arm? Well, actually, 
if you do something like this and put some speed lines in it, like he's flying, it'll make more sense, and that's his body. Really, the whole thing's up front like this. Like that? I like that sketch. Okay, let's do another one. And I got a great sketch for you. It shows a lot of action. And it's a golfer. And we'll start with an oval for his head. And for the line of action, we're going to put his body leaning forward like that. And here's his foot. And here's his other foot. And his arms, well, they're straight up like that, holding the golf club. And the golf club, here's his circle to indicate where his hand's going to be. And here's the golf club. Comes all the way around. And there it is. So ah, the whole thing is laid out now. Now let's go back in and let's do his face. Now his face is looking down at the ball. Because you know you're not supposed to pick up your head. And here's his eyes. And there's his eyebrows. And a smile. And an ear. And some hair. Okay. We're all experts on the faces now from the past, so I'm not going to concentrate on that. I want to get to the body pose. And there's his hat flying off his head. A couple of lines like that indicate it's not just floating in air. Okay, now for this arm here, he is leaning over that arm. And this is the arm that's going to be holding the golf club, like this. Okay, now we come back around for his body. And he's wearing a sweater, so we can bunch that a little bit. Put some wavy lines to make it look like it's bending, because it is clothing. And for this arm here, we thicken up that line that we have started. And put his thumb in, and some fingers. And let's put the golf club in. Now we're using that as a guideline, we're not going to use it exactly. And here's the golf club. All right. Now, for this part here, let's put his leg in. And his golf shoe, which we put some spikes on. Uh, that's coming out great. And this part right here. And other foot. And some spikes. And let's put the ball in. Make the ball a little bit larger, because it's Cartoon World. And in Cartoon World, you can have a face on the ball. And the face could be saying, he could be thinking the golf club, uh-oh, or he's getting closer, or whatever you want. Let's add a little color to this guy. Let's use uh, some tuning pencils. There you go, put a little color up there like that, and maybe for his hands, and a little bit of red. And the good thing about drawing from sporting events is that all the sporting events have built-in props, they have built-in uh, uniforms, and, and that makes it real easy because you just have to report it, and it makes it a lot more interesting, and you can concentrate on all the things that it's, uh, that it's got going for it. And let's see, put a little green in here. And there he is, Joe Goffer. Do one last one, I've got a quickie to show you. Uh, let's see, oh, I know what I'll do. And this one is a quickie because we're only going to see a very small amount of this action drilling but it's enough to show action. And there it is. There is a face and a nose and a mouth is open like this. And let's see, let's have his teeth open and out like that. His mouth's open and his face, his eyes are wide open and he's determined because he's a swimmer. So let's have his hair wet and down and let's see, we'll have his arm straight back like this, out of the water, and his arm is back, his hand is back, and his other arm, well, you don't see it because he's in the water. So here's an action pose, and you don't see very much of it, but if we put some cartoon effects and accessories on this guy, 
he ends up to be a pretty good sketch. Uh, let's find some blue for the water. Here it is. And I think that's about all the time we have. And I'd like to just tell you that a good way to practice is, as I said, go to the sporting events live with a sketch pad or watch it on television. But the thing is, as a cartoonist, there he is, there's a guy swimming in color. The thing is, as a cartoonist, is not just to report exactly what's going on. We have, we have cameras for that. It's to exaggerate the action, you know, really take it to the max. Next up, the feature of the day. Now this is a fun feature to do when it's called Find the Differences Picture. Remember in the beginning of the show I said, did you ever see two pictures that are identical and you have to find the differences in one from the other? Well, that's what we're going to do today. And let's start with a busy beautician scene. And I'll start to lay that out right here. First, we'll draw the beautician over here. And there's her nose and a big smile and some lipstick and a facial outline just like that. All right, now her eyes, we're all there in use because her eyes are shut. And let's give her a big fluffy hairdo. Yeah, I like that. And here's her collar. And her sleeve coming out this way. And her arm. And she's holding, what else? A comb. Okay, now here's the person she's working on. Now, this isn't a happy woman here. Here's her nose. Here's her facial outline. And here's her mouth, which is half open. She's a gape because she is shocked. She's looking in the mirror at what she looks like. And here's her hair. All sticking up like this. I like that. And here's her shoulder. And she's wearing a smock. And she's looking in the mirror right here through the mirror. Now, when you're drawing somebody in a mirror, you just draw the same thing a little bit fainter. You know, you don't bear down on your pen quite as much. Now, here's her nose, and on the same line, you draw the nose and her mouth. And remember, you have to reverse it now. It's a mirror image. Here's her eyes, and here's that hair. Now, to make something look like a mirror reflection effect, you just go like this. Take some diagonal lines right over the drawing. Don't worry about it. And it looks like a, a mirror, a reflection, a glass. And this is the countertop. And on the countertop, we're going to put a few elements. And we're going to make this real busy, a real busy scene. Now, I'm not going to have time to finish all this right now. So I'm going to stop and bring out a finished version of this picture. And here it is. And this is a finished version, and I have a bunch of elements in this thing. I've got a door, and I've got plants, and I've got uh, someone looking in the window. And I left out some key elements on purpose. Then what I've done is I've gone to a photocopy machine and made a few copies. Uh, and I made a few extras because I make a mistake once in a while. So uh, what I do now is I'll take this, and I will tape it down right here so we can add these key elements to it right now. Okay, get my pen. And let's see, right over here, around the hairdryer, I'm going to put a jar of cold cream on the counter. And right behind, i got this cord. And the cord is going up into a plug. And let's see what else we can add. What else? Oh, I know, a cone in our pocket. And an umbrella in the stand. And let me see, we'll make our skirt plaid. That's pretty sneaky. No one will find that one. And a mat, a doorknob. How's that? That's pretty small. And a picture, which is a big item. Sometimes they miss the big ones. And let me see what else we can do here. Oh, I know. A flower in her hair. There you go. And you can go on and on. You can add as much detail as you like. And then when you're done, you take both your drawings and you can put them in an activity book. Make your own fun activity book. Look what I've done here. Bruce's Activity Fun Book. And try it 
on your family and friends. It's great fun, and I know they'll enjoy it too. Next up, cartoon doodle tricks. Stay tuned. Today's doodle tricks are alphabet tunes, and I'd like to welcome my friends today. How you doing, guys? Hey! Okay, let's do our first one, and the first one is going to be the letter V. And I'll draw a bird from the letter V. So V stands for very funny bird. How's that? And what we'll do is we'll draw two circles right on top of the V, and a couple more circles inside, and eyebrows, and that'll be his beak. Some nostrils, and its head some hairs and that was easy and the good thing about drawing doodle tricks is most of the drawing was already done by writing in the letter you like that yeah, that's good yeah. Okay. Okay. let's do another one i'll tell you what i can draw a bird from any letter in the alphabet i'm taking requests here who can stump me ready how about k okay yeah okay thank you very much anybody else any other requests here okay okay i can do that you didn't stump me here that's all right so we'll draw k now what you do is you look at the letter and you say, all right, what can I do here? All right, I got an idea. Right over here, I'll make a beak. On top of that, I'll make an eye and an eyebrow and his head and his body. And you got a woodpecker and his feet. And we'll have him sitting on a tree limb. And this line here will be the tree. You didn't think I was going to do it, did you? Tell the truth. That's all right. Uh, uh, you had no faith in me here. And some swirlies for knot holes. And how about some sound effects? Peck. Peck. There you go. Like that one? That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do another one. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do a doodle trick from the letter V again, but a totally different cartoon. And that's the idea. You want to practice by going through the alphabet and try to come up with as many different sketches for the same letter. That's how you develop a keen eye for cartooning. Right in the middle here, I'll put a circle with some ears and have a guy's face, his nose, and a big smile, and his eyes up. Now, this can be his arms, and here's his hands. And he's raising his hands in joy. In fact, we can even write, yay! Yeah! Sound effect. And there it is. You like that one? Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Another request. Anybody else handle the letter? X. X, okay. The letter X. X, let me see. X marks the spot. Right here. No. Okay, I got an idea. Put a rectangle up there. A rectangle right there. Some fanciness here. Anybody get an idea so far what this is? Yeah, it's an hourglass. It's an hourglass, that's exactly right. Pretty good. Let's put some sand in there. And some sand here. Piling up. And it looks like time is running out. And as a matter of fact, that's all the time we have for today. And I hope you've enjoyed it. How's that for a segue? You like that? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. good. Uh, and our blitz tip today, and it's a very good one, practice is so important. We all know that, right? And I'd say that practice has no enemies except one. Laziness. You gotta watch out for this guy right here. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me and help me out guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning. Okay.